on behalf of students, faculty, staff, community, and the president of Lawrence Technological University, it is my distinct honor to introduce today's keynote speaker, speaker from the great state of Michigan, the Honorable Governor Gretchen Whitmer. A year ago, I launched the My New Economy, the Michigan New Economy, an economic vision for Michigan at the Mackinac Policy Conference. And it was developed in partnership with countless stakeholders, including many of you, and included a series of ambitious, achievable goals. The guiding principles were clear. We're going to grow the middle class, support businesses of all sizes, and invest in communities. But at its core, it's really about people. It's what the work is about, people. And the reasoning behind the plan was just as important as what is in it. It called on us to reject the false choice between a great quality of life and a good cost of living. We can and must do both. If you ignore investments in the basics, like education and infrastructure, water and childcare, it's harder to attract and retain families and businesses long term. In my time as governor, that's precisely what we've been focused on, building a future that leaves no one behind. The My New Economy vision focuses on the fundamentals, the goals to lift 100,000 families out of working poverty, to pursue our 60 by 30 goal, to have 60% of Michiganders 25 and up, uh, to earn a post-secondary degree or skills by 2030, to expand access to low or no cost childcare to 150,000 families, to become a top 10 state for small business growth, revenue growth, and venture capital funding, to build 75,000 new or rehabilitated housing units, and to ensure 100% access to high-speed internet in five years. Achieving this vision will help us build a strong, sustainable Michigan that we will be proud to pass on to our kids. So today, one year later, it's time to take stock of how far we've come. In the past year, I've signed my third and fourth, my fourth budget, uh, balanced budgets, making record investments in education, workforce development, public safety, and more. We've created new bipartisan economic development tools that empower us to compete for transformational projects and bring home supply chains and batteries, electric vehicles, and semiconductors. And we've made progress on the goals of the My New Economy Plan. When I took office, 45% of our working age population had higher education or skills training. Today, because of the work that we've done to establish the Michigan Reconnect and Futures for Frontliners, to create new apprenticeships and fund going pro, we're up to 50%, which is putting us on track to meet that 60 by 30 goal. Today, fewer families uh, are, are, work, are in working poverty, more homes are connected to the internet, and more affordable, attainable units have been built. And best of all, we did achieve an important My New Economy goal. In the last year, we worked across the aisle to expand access to low or no cost childcare to 150,000 more kids. When we met this goal, our progress on childcare is proof of what's possible when we work together. During the pandemic, the importance of childcare was magnified. We've all seen it. As a mom, I know how essential childcare is for parents to go back to work. Our childcare investments are making a real difference to Michiganders like Holly. Holly is a full-time childcare, uh, she says full-time childcare costs her family more than $700 a month. Thanks to new grants and the TriShare program, we are paying a third of what they did before. So we're taking care of $230 of that a month. Quality, affordable childcare is a game changer. It means $5,600 a year back in Holly's pocket and peace of mind knowing that her son is safe while she's at work. There's still more good work to do, but we've taken a big step in the right direction. Governing can sometimes get lost in the competitive grant programs, PowerPoints, spreadsheets, you know, all the exciting stuff that governors like to talk about. But it's really stories like Holly's, which is why we do this. 
It's the reason for the work. They are a reminder for us to keep centering our work on people in everything that we do. As we keep pushing forward on our shared goals, let's keep centering those goals around the people of our state. Let's keep sharing stories of progress while recognizing that we've got more good work to do. The vision I set forth may not be accomplished in a term or even two, or an administration or two, but they are goals for us as a state to, to work together on. Goals that are essential to the purpose that we all share, a brighter future for Michigan. A state where the best minds and the brightest entrepreneurs and the innovative businesses come together to build the future. Where every family has safe, affordable place to call home, clean water running out of their taps, stunning public places to relax and unwind. Where everyone, no matter who they are, no matter where they come from, how much money they have in their pocket, where everyone has a chance to succeed from cradle to career. And that's what we are working towards. So while I'm here, I say, let's keep going. I got even more good news today that will empower Michiganders to pursue their potential and achieve the vision of the My New Economy Plan. Two weeks ago, the Michigan legislature and I negotiated a bipartisan supplemental investing in economic development and higher education. Last week, I signed part of it that helped us land two battery plants the very next day and bringing nearly $4 billion in the state of Michigan and creating 4,500 good paying jobs. And today, right here at Lawrence Tech, I want to sign the other bill, establishing the Michigan Achievement Scholarship. $250 million for scholarships to make college more affordable, to grow our talent pool, to meet our goal of 60 by 30. I've been working to lower the cost of education since the day I took office, and I am proud we are getting it done. Over 180,000 Michiganders are on the path to higher education or skills training, tuition free, thanks to the Michigan Reconnect and the Futures for Frontliners. And today, we're making college a reality for thousands of Michiganders across our state. Starting with the class of 2023, high school graduates will be eligible for, eligible for annual financial aid from the state up to $2,750 for a community college, $4,000 at a private college, and $5,500 at a public university. Michigan students will be automatically eligible if their family demonstrates financial need when they complete FAFSA. And the scholarship will make a difference and make college more affordable for the vast majority of Michiganders. 94% of community college students, 76% of private university students, and 79% of public university students. I'm really excited about this because I know it's going to make a difference in the lives of so many young people in our state. As we think about ensuring that Michigan is a place that can attract and retain young talent, Leveling the financial barrier is one important aspect of doing that. So I'm excited to sign that, but before I do, I want to invite my, my good friend, Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence out here. Um, real quick, my dear friend, please join me in welcoming her. She has served this community in Congress since 2014, but her dedication to Southfield, of course, goes far beyond that for decades. After working in the United States Postal Service, she became the first black Michiganer and the first woman to serve as mayor of Southfield, a job that she held for 14 years. A few years ago, she told me she would be honored to help me fix the damn roads by writing a damn check from Congress. <laughs> and that's exactly what she did helping pass the bipartisan infrastructure law as the vice chair of the House Appropriations Committee. In Congress, she also fought for state drinking water, empowered women, and focused on strong, equitable economic growth. And of course, she delivered one final package, ushering the bipartisan postal reform into law earlier this year. The new law modernizes the USPS, protects retiree benefits, and improves delivery options for customers. Throughout her career, she has recognized that people are at the heart of policy. Fred, I hope you and Matt and your family enjoy some well-deserved time off. 
I've never seen her look so white and happy. <laughs>
pledge that we make to put the world on wheels and keep you going to the next generation. so proud to stand next to that woman, that woman who have changed the lives of so many and will continue to be that woman that cares for the state, that invests in the state, who are committed to stand beside you, with you, lead you, or push you as we go into the next generation. Thank you so much. partnership, it takes focus, and centering our work around people. And so I want to thank the Congresswoman for the incredible work she's done at the federal level. I want to thank my partners in the legislature. We've got uh, legislators from both sides of the aisle, from both chambers in the legislature who are here, who are critical to getting this getting this over the finish line. And so um, as I sign the bill, I'd love for the legislators to come up and join me so we can uh, celebrate this moment together. It's a great bipartisan effort. And um, none of us does any of these things alone, so thank you, and please come on up. Thank you, everybody. All right, it is time. <laughs>